to allow others to come in. Let me greet um, everyone who's on the platform once again. And um, those who were not on the platform yet when I greeted the first time, um, hello and welcome to this platform for the first time. This is um, a webinar under the title Unlocking Value of Data to Drive Business Intelligence. My name is Oli Le Martin. I'll be moderator for this um, webinar. And also at some point, I will be actually one of the speakers or participating as a speaker as well. Our other speakers are um, Dr. Ayanda Majibi and uh, Mr. Warabi Lesilegisho. Just to give background of um, what the webinar is about and how it will be structured or how the proceedings will be structured. I am now doing the opening remarks and at, after that point, Dr. Majibi will come in and he will speak around matters of data governance and data management. And after that, Mr. Silegisho will come in and speak on matters of really collecting data and treating data as a fiber of maybe our culture and everyday activity across the province of the Eastern Cape, that is in government. And after that, I will come in and speak on business intelligence in government. What is business intelligence and what um, is business intelligence in government? And maybe to kick off, let me speak of a moment back in 2012 when Ralph Kimball, or the founding father of data warehousing, actually came here to South Africa and did a masterclass on business intelligence and data warehousing. <laughs> Excuse me. While he was in, in South Africa, he went to one of the um, nature reserves. And what he observed there was the phenomenon of mixed species grazing. So there were different species of animals grazing from the small meerkat and up to the tall giant uh, giraffe. And they noticed a lion approaching these grazing animals. And because of its color, it started merging with the brown savanna grass. And when it did so, of course, it's difficult for, anima, for other animals or the grazing animals to, to, to see it and identify it. And that is the, the concept of camouflage. So it started um, crawling towards these animals. But the meerkat, because it is small and short and has its ears very close to the ground and basically picking up all the vibrations that are taking place in the grass, it picked up an out of place vibration. It lifted it, its head up and erected it in the air and started looking around. The springbok, which was in the mixed uh, grazing um, crowd, did not ask questions. It lifted its head up immediately and its ears were erected, trying to pick up sounds. The Veldebiests or Inyati that were around there started raising their wet noses into the air, trying to pick up any scent. 
and they picked up a predator scent and they started running around in circles. The giraffe immediately took this as a warning and it started scanning the terrain and environment and it picked up the lion. It saw it, it picked, up, it, picked it up visually and it started running in the opposite direction from where the lion is. And all the other animals did not ask questions. They started following the giraffe running in that direction. I'm giving this analogy because it's an analogy I've always seen as the best description of business intelligence in an ecosystem. That there are different departments, sector departments in our case, there are different municipalities, there are different state-owned companies and entities, if one chooses to say, and they are all working towards a single certain goal, but they often work in silos and transfer of information and data from one silo to another is usually troublesome. And business intelligence tries to take away that trouble point in an ecosystem and so that there is, an, there is always a single view of a single truth of where an organization or a body wants to go. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to this webinar. And we have come to a point now where we will hand over to our speakers and allow them to, to cover the different areas that they would be covering. And as we had said, our first speaker will be Dr. Ayanda Majibi, um, who's known as Nyerere in other circles. He is the ICT specialist here at EXEC. He's a former provincial CIO or CIO of the province. He holds a PhD um, which was on 4IR and, and how 4IR tools are used in government or can be used in government. With that brief introduction, ladies and gentlemen, please let us allow Dr. Majibi to come on the platform and speak around data governance. Over to you, Doc. Thank you, uh, let me just quickly share my screen. I'm not Rui. Can you see my screen, Gabriela? Can you see my screen? You can see it there. Okay. Yes, Doc, we can see it. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, colleagues. Uh, colleagues, good day and welcome to all who joined this uh, webinar. It's a very critical issue, the issue of data, especially around the province, because most of our decisions that we are making currently are not informed by data. So it is critical that now we might, we must be a Dr. Can I yeah. confirm that you are speaking and that other colleagues on the platform can hear you? Am I audible? Yes, he's audible. Yes, Doc. Oh, okay. Can you look at me from your side? Yes, Doc. Mr. X. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, and quite as I was saying, that data is very critical in every aspect of government, especially now when we want to do make decisions, so that uh, we can be a data-driven official uh, government where our 
our decisions are directly coming from a proof of data. So I'll go through very quickly to the first slide because we probably will really dwell in more on this part. But my area here is just to check the importance of uh, business intelligence. As you can see that it improves decision making process. It makes it easy to access share information. And it was very time analysis with quick navigation helps identify waste in the system, reduces the risk of bottlenecks, helps you to know your business or your organization. That's what uh, in a nutshell business intelligence is. But we can really dwell in and zoom in into all the areas here uh, with the understanding of the business intelligence. As an example of this uh, business intelligence, there's a dashboard that has been used in the province in relation to COVID. It's real time. Every data that's been captured is shown in real time, which assists all the uh, districts. Which districts is more, as you can see here, next month, 43. So now people from health or people who are responsible for COVID uh, mitigations, it's easy to say now, okay, Seeing this board, can we quickly intervene in Nelson Mandela because it seems to be rising, including the information around how many tourists are in the country, so that in, in the province, which area are they in? So all this detailed come from this dashboard, which is a pure PI system that is running. So it did assist a lot when it comes to the COVID cases in the province and the mitigation thereof. It's up and running even now. You can go to our website at exec and you can capture and see this dashboard. This is what is called PI in literal sense. But you saw that there's a, a business intelligence institute which says every business or, or PI or analytics initiative needs to have a foundation of accurate, well-managed data that come from a robust data governance program. There's no other statement which can be true rather than this one. Because we should remember the old saying, saying, garbage in, garbage out. Whatever you collect as data, if it's a garbage, it's going to come out as a garbage. So your decisions that you are making will be least informed decision. Hence, you need to have an accurate uh, well-managed data to a program called Data Governance Program. The foundation of PI and analytics. Uh, all these areas are talking about the piece of intelligence. You must store this data around what is called today as uh, terms, that is the data warehouse. A data warehouse uh, enables and supports business intelligence activities especially all the business analytics that you are playing around with, including predictions of future uh, issues. Your data warehouse, the data that is stored in that data warehouse. So this is the process of collecting and managing this data from various different sources that are different and collect them. As an example, in our case, we've got different information from departments, different information from municipalities, all the SOEs that want to collect so that we put in one data warehouse for the province, which is hosted within EXEC. We can level dwell in uh, even or uh, on that issue. Mine is to put the foundation level of governance. Uh, it is typically used to collect and analyze business data from heterogeneous sources, as I said earlier. And it is the core for PI system. That is the data warehouse. But how do you store this data and how does it link to data governance? The building and maintaining of data warehouse needs the attention of data requirements across the enterprise that the robust, which the robust data governance program provides. 
we're gonna go through what is the double governance program so that we can understand fully how important is this data governance when it comes to data uh, as an asset so data warehouse uh, slash pi initiatives require organization to make decisions that involve data from several sources to enable cross application analysis you can have 20 systems running different uh, applications but the source of data can come to the data warehouse and play around uh, through the systems called etl and have a fully fledged uh, information that you can play around to the pi data governance efforts usually involve common and such data integrity as i said earlier that data must be clean data quality standardization metadata change management and audit capabilities this is part of the process of data governance which we we'll talk about now these components are especially important in any cross organizational effort and are essential in business intelligence and analytics hence Kayla was saying in his opening that our planning within government is not integrated but now if you've got a pure data that is centralized and can be used by each and every department it's going to be easy now to understand that before you can build your school in this area are there any uh, issues around uh, logistics of roads and everything uh, clinics so that when you build you could integrate it building or integrated development within a certain area rather than saying let me have a school you don't even know how many schools that are there someone is saying okay as a counselor i need my people to have new roads without any data uh data supporting that hence this data warehouse is critically to off it so in the province what are we doing around this in order to support this uh, data governance is simply a program by which the province can proactively manage data in order to meet government business needs as i said just now this includes a charter a charter is same in terms of reference that lays forth broad guidelines for putting data governance into practice a framework or a guide to create a single set of rules and processes for collecting storing and using data i'll show you the framework now the sample a policy mandate on how the province is going to manage this data if you remember even the country that is south africa doesn't have a data governance policy till today so if the province at least can do a policy on data governance it could be a plus for the country as a whole so that at least we send the trend that eastern cape has got a data governance a, a, a data governance policy that lays the foundation of how to manage data definitions of roles and responsibilities concerning data processes what and how to manage data so basically what we are saying here data governance program encompasses people processes and technologies required to manage and protect data assets that's the bottom line so so now in the province what have we done as now uh, of now you remember this is a a, a, a framework around how to form a uh, governance structures when it comes to data we've got the provincial executive leadership structures like your gma cluster your executive gma all those uh, executive leadership which are in the province which must take leadership around data governance we've got data governance steering committee which sits totally to see various issues of policies of processes and other various issues you've got data owners who own this data that must be released 
is it clean data? Then we've got a specialist who are working with uh, data on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the area where Orabile uh, will be talking about. And then what we have done in the province, we've got a BI task team sitting within the council. Council, council is the provincial Jito council, which entails all the CIOs from various departments, including municipalities. So there's a task team there called BI task team, which focuses on driving this program of tender governments. Within uh, COCTA, there's what is called local government uh, GIS task team. With all its members coming from local government. And then uh, they form what is called local government GIS task team. At EXEC, we've got what is called tender government steering committee. So these three triangles, that is testing, uh, exec, uh, COGTA, we've got what is called a provincial uh, data governance steering committee. So they work in tandem. So basically what we are saying is that here the provincial data governance steering committee, as I said from the previous slide, We've done the provincial match water assessment already. We know our level where it is because we had nothing before. So what we are planning to do is to have each charter which has been signed already by the office of the premier. The temperature wealth in terms of reference of what must be done. Data governance framework, I'll show you now, is a draft format which needs to be discussed across the province. So that everybody understands what is really required. Data governance policy, as I said earlier on. And then lastly, action plans, what must be done as an action so that we've got a, a fully fledged uh, data driven province where we implement. Then the, it will support all the uh, projects like the Kaulesa PMO, which is hosted at EXEC. And, and order we will talk about that. And then PCM Smart City, you know, remember that PCM is currently engaging in a project of a smart city. There are various other projects that need this data. Because, for instance, if someone comes in and asks how many ICT people uh, are employed by government uh, in the Eastern Cape, it's not easy to just tap into a system and bring up all those. You must go to SOCDEF, OTP, PESAL, this a silo or PESAL systems and collect all that information, which might take two to three weeks to get the full information. Whereas if you've got a repository, a warehouse house, that you can in just press the button, you get the, the information immediately without wasting any seconds. These are the issues we're talking about here. This is the full first program that we're engaging in within the province. What are the highlights of a uh, project drug governance framework? Currently, there's, a, there's a, a drive to develop a strategy which is about to be finished. It's in draft format. Uh, we'll be consulting departments now. Uh, jointly with the team from OTP and the CIO's office uh, having this provincial digital transformation strategy, which recognizes data as a strategic asset. So, with all its strategic objectives and areas, and then encompasses that there's enterprise governance, which has got your IT governance, your information governance, your data governance. Oversight, we've got risk management. What is the risk of doing this? Identification mitigation. At the center, you've got what is called data governance. One, data leadership, as we said earlier. Data ownership, operating model, policies and procedures, data literacy and culture, 
enterprise projects and services, data management, data privacy, which is very important, which includes POPI. If you recall, the province now is implementing POPI through EXEC on all the federal departments to support this area because it's a risk on its own uh, because information regulator uh, has given a mandate to say by 1st of July previous year, we supposed to be all under OP and understanding OP. So the province is late already, but we are there uh, on that area. And then what are the outputs from this uh, framework? A defined data, accountability and responsibility, knowledge and common understanding of data assets, trust and confidence in traceable data, improved data, return of investment for informed decision making, and support ethical use of data in a data-driven culture, which we want as a province, that our culture must be data-driven. Whatever decision we're making, whatever planning we're doing within the province for service delivery is based on data. Information delivery plan is that, as I said, illegal data at the top that come from government, that come from projects, that come from IEC data to check the predict the elections. Any data coming from government, which is being taken to integration and governance, we manage it properly with planning, organizing, manage, govern, and share. Very important, the sharing of that data, so that when you plan as a department or as a municipality, everybody plans according to what has been captured as a pure data. And then that's where now you're saying now once the data is captured, plan, organized, and managed, it goes to be PI ready, where now we can describe, organize, integrate, analyze, and share. And once you've done that, you've got all the acceptable insight where you get reports, you get dashboards, as I showed earlier, you get analytics, you get a self-service on data. So all this is what information delivery plan we are trying to do within the province. So how does it align this governance to business? It was it's not standing alone. Because we want to be a data driven province where we use data excellency for public value. And underneath that, we've got the data governance, all our structures, road definitions, policies, metrics, include data management, data security, data quality, the BI, data architecture, metadata, all these areas. And they must be monitored through training of people, change management, KPI and matrix, and assessment of the majority, because we need to reach uh, the, the, the last part of data-driven province as a province. But on top of that, there must be people, because the steering committees need to monitor everything happening within uh, this program of data governance. Data community, data talent, which means training on data. And then analytics, as I say, BI tools, they are at the end, monitoring tools, dashboards, predictive analysis. But on top of that, they are key enablers, the culture of the organization, of, of, the, of the province, values, and people. Because if people are not involved, then we are doomed. I think my part has been completed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. X. Um, thank you, Doc, for that um, thorough presentation. Mm -hmm. And it's a presentation that, that speaks to the groundwork and the basics that need to be in place 
for any organization, body, company, or government to actually implement and realize true business intelligence. There needs to be a clear set of rules, a clear set of guidelines, a clear way of doing things, a clear way of navigating around the data, handling the data, utilizing the data, and even consuming the data. And um, keywords that, that, that I would like to, to take out of there are culture and also the value of data and even return um, on investment where we see data as an investment. And, and truly at the end, you speak to, to the fact that for BI readiness to be achieved or, or for, for business intelligence itself to be achieved, we need data in all the, the landscape, the technology that we've laid, the, the infrastructure that we, we've put together. Ultimately, we need data in there. And in, in, in trying to influence a certain future, the future we, we're trying to influence with this webinar is a future where all entities and bodies of government in the Eastern Cape actually share their data with what is known as the Provincial Data Center, which I will speak about when I get there. But Mr. Silegisho is going to speak right now on how we get that data to the data center, to the provincial data center, and how the quality and accuracy of that data is important and how it can also be achieved. Mr. Silegisho is a software developer by profession. He's worked in the higher education space for, for, for most of his career life. He's worked for what we knew as Pentech, but now is the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. And in later years, he's been responsible for data management uh, processes at the, not at the NSFAS or the National Scheme for, for, for Funding of Students. Um, I will now give an opportunity to Mr. Slegisho to speak on data quality and how we move data. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. As uh, Mr. Martin has alluded, that my name is Kwara Vlesilekish. So I won't rehash what he just said. No, no. Um, <clears throat> and thank you very much, Pro, uh, uh, Doc, for the presentation. Now, at least we know that uh, everything that we do, we do within the ambience of governance, as you, you have articulated. And I think also our data strategy the pillars as you have presented and find expression in the work that you have just presented. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much for, for, for that. Uh, my colleagues, I, I am going to uh, um, look into issues of business processes around data, since we can't just source data, you know, there has to be a method and a way in which we source data so that it makes it easy for us to be able to interpret it. I would look at also strategies around data sourcing uh, that we are using here in, in, in the colors of PMO, and then how then do we ingest that data into our system? And then how then do we profile that data so that we gauge the quality of data, that now the data is ready to be consumed in the BI space. And then we'll also look at the data quality dimensions, and then I will then conclude my pre-presentation. You know, we're having this webinar, the backdrop of the strategic planning that we had. And I think we all agreed that uh, the organization based on the 10 year of clean audit, so that we, we need now to take our organization from being good to great. 
But the question now is how, how then do we then do that? And I think the answer is in the processes. The answer is in reviewing existing processes and the answer is in uh, uh, designing new processes where there's no processes. Because the problem is uh, um, how then do you source data outside the process? You know, you would end up just taking any data and throwing it into your platform. That is very expensive, obviously, to, 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 to host and all that. So we need to look into processes and make sure that our processes are aligned, they are fit for purpose and all that. And in us reviewing the processes that are existing, we also just need to look at uh, opportunities of collaboration. You know, collaboration is not just a concept that should exist in our minds. By logical designs, we need to be able to demonstrate it, even in our physical designs. We need to be able to demonstrate uh, um, collab and collaborate. Um, since all of us to be able to do whatever that we need to do or engage in the task and events that we set uh, uh, for ourselves in supporting the overall business objective, it is then important that we, we work together so that to maximize even our effort of uh, um, uh, acquiring those inputs into our own processes. Uh, so it is important, and when those processes are defined, what is then key is to make sure that processes are standardized across uh, uh, the board. And then when we do that successfully, it presents an opportunity for us to automate. Uh, and uh, in our journey, obviously, of moving our organization from good to great. So it, it is important when we started this work, the very first thing that we tried to deal with was that we need to scan our environment, that what systems are used in government departments, in all our external uh, stakeholders. And that was uh, because we wanted to look at opportunities of us directly integrating, you know, with the system, because what we are picking up in the work that we are doing is that problems are not only uh, human problems. We, we, we're picking up that even systems, the data quality that exists in some of the system in the province is questionable, you know. So we, we need to try and address it that way and make sure that uh, we, we, we improve the quality of the data and change also the human behavior so that when they capture that data, they know that it has a lot of effects in a lot of other things. For instance, if you say that you want to geolocate your projects. If you don't give me address, how are we going to then achieve that? You know. So um, looking at, at the types of data that we are sourcing at the moment, we're looking at structured, unstructured data. Uh, we decided on the method. This list is not exhaustive. There are other methods, obviously, that we can use, but these are the uh, uh, technologies or methods that we looked at and we said this is what we prefer as, 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 as the Kaolesa uh, uh, KPMO. And uh, one of the, the file transfer protocols that we decided on, it is obviously the Connect Direct. And I would also deal with why Connect Direct, since there's a lot of uh, 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 technologies that we can use to transfer files from uh, uh, one place to the other. But the Connect Direct, its uh, advantage is that in the event that there's a problem with the network and then we drop, when the network is up, we just resume where it left off. And this platform is not uh, language independent. So it means that we can, it's, 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 it's compatible. We can use it with any other technology. So there's another one here that I'm dealing with, a stealing file gateway. That uh, is security rich. So when we obviously because of the data that we're sourcing from all other uh, uh, departments and from our external stakeholders, we need to also classify it. And we know that this data, it's, uh, it needs to be handled differently. And then based on that, then we decide on the technology to use to transfer that data from one place to the other. This uh, Stealing Fight Gateway is very rich in uh, in uh, uh, security, and it also provides the data uh, the data encryption. So the secure file tra transport protocol, this one we know, we, all of us, we, we, we know FTP, uh, uh, like to just drop the file and all that, and it doesn't also need 
any sophisticated, I mean, it's just a simple, an FTP account that we use, and then we can transfer the data and when we need to do so. So when I started uh, uh, talking colleagues, I spoke of us scanning the systems in the environment. And I said that it's because of we wanted to look at opportunities as to uh, can't we build APIs or direct integration, you know, so that just to uh, um, also minimize the hands in our processes, you know, also improve in the turnaround times and all that. Because if it's technology, we can automate it, you can set it to fetch data as and when you need it without us even being there, you know, because we build for the future, we're not building for only today. So there's, there's integrations as well that we looked at, the, the, the messaging and web services protocols. The web sphere uh, uh, is one of those that we looked at as well, um, guaranteed delivery, that one. And uh, it's, 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 it's ability to handle uh, big uh, data. So, 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 and the SOAP one is the one that we all uh, uh, you know. Most of the tech, uh, tech people in the platform, for sure, they are more familiar with that one. And with the rest, uh, uh, the full web services and all that. So when we, we receive these data colleagues from uh, uh, our colleagues as external stakeholders and all that, we dump this data. And when I say dumping, I'm not just saying a dump zone where we take whatever data and then we dump it. No, it is within a process. So when we source data, it is because of there's a question that we want to respond to, or there's a problem that we want to analyze further. We don't just go around and then source data. So when this data lands here, we, we put it in a dump zone. What we then do with the data in the dump zone, we run our profiling stop procedures. Uh, to gain the quality of our data. If data meets the quality, it jumps magically from uh, that stage to our deaf environment. So if it doesn't meet that quality, that data goes straight to scrubbing. And in the scrubbing area, that's where we then decide that uh, uh, some of the things are maybe material we can't, we can't really change. It's information that we need to push back to uh, our clients where we source the data for them to correct and send it back to us. But for information that we can, for instance, uh, change an ID number of your one 2000, it uses the leading zeros. We can do that. We can massage data but to a certain level, not, not fixing uh, everything because of we'll end up miss uh, 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 or mudding the data, if one may put it that way. So when we have our data now in our in our dev environment, there's then a process or a technology that we then use to move that data into our data warehouse. Now the structure becomes a bit different. Uh, I think Mr. Martin alluded to the Kimball. That's what we are actually using to build our 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 data warehouse. So we build SSIS packages that takes the data from our dev environment to our uh, data warehouse environment. And these SSI packages obviously are timed. There are listeners that we have uh, put in place as well, so that when there's new data, then it can pick that new data up and then push to for the EWD. That's where now BI sits. BI sits on top of our data warehouse. It doesn't sit in any other uh, RDBMS structures, the relational databases and all that. It doesn't sit there. It plugs in from our data warehouse. So I thought that it's important for me to uh, show you how actually we, we handle this data as soon as it uh, reaches our shows. Now, I made mention of data profiling. I just want to deal with the the uh, uh, benefits of data profiling. The data profiling, as I've said, that uh, we gauge the quality of the data and see if whether it's usable. Is it adequate enough to respond to any business problems or is it adequate for us to be able to, to, to impact uh, uh, decision making and all that? So that's what we do when we data profile. And obviously, the higher the quantity of the data, the uh, the, the, if your data is accurate, obviously it has good then outcomes in terms of informing business decisions and all that. 
so even the gaps in the data, this process helps us to uh, identify the gaps in the data. And colleagues, this is not a desktop exercise, what I've put in, in the slide here. What we then did is that we could consume uh, data from one of the uh, systems that we have here in the province, and then we ran this process. I think Mr. Martin, when he presents his uh, part, the BI part, he deal with some of the findings there as to what is it that we, we, we came up with, the gaps that exist in our data and all that. The more the gaps in the data, the less usable is, is, is then the data. Then it's the exercise, it's future. So I understand that we need to, to change and make sure that we as humans, when we deal with the data, we are cognizant of some of this thing, the data quality dimensions. And the reason why this then it becomes important, it is because if we are to regard our data as the new gold, we need to make sure that these things here on the, the uh, data quality dimensions are intact. Our data is complete. The data is consistent. You know, today you give me data in a template and then tomorrow the same piece of data, we have changed that template and there's missing information in it. So that makes the process of automating and how then we source that data from where we are picking it up to our stores, it makes that process very difficult. So it is important that we pay attention and make sure that whatever that we do, uh, it is really intact. And the problem is at two levels, it's human problems, but even the systems, some of the system uh, that uh, some of our uh, government departments are using are very problematic. Uh, Mr. Martin will deal with the report of profiling as to what is it that we're picking up. And that data comes from these systems, but it comes with gaps. There's no addresses in some instances, there's no even measurements as to uh, uh, what is then the value of the project and all that. And that has then this effects that enable us or disable us to really give the province the visualization and the intelligence that they need to, 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 to move us forward. In conclusion, colleagues, I think it's uh, paramount that uh, we elevate collaboration amongst programs to minimize duplication of effort and improve uh, turnaround time. Uh, nowadays, they say we, there's what we call data fatigue, like uh, sourcing fatigue, to try and avoid that uh, we requesting for the same information over and over again, instead of maybe collaborating and say, you know, we've got only one gate that focuses to our externals uh, and all request goes that way so that we know what we have in our shows and we know what we don't and we can collaborate in that. So, and also uh, uh, as I've alluded to the fact that some of the problems that we are having are human problems. We need to change our attitude in handling of, 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 our, of our data in order that we improve the value of data as an organizational asset. And the staticness of, 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 of our processes. We operate today in a very dynamic uh, environment where things changes, you know. There are other external variables that uh, influence change. And when that happens, our processes need to be dynamic uh, enough so that they can acquaint to whatever the new uh, 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 whatever the new environment presents, you know. So we need, don't need to be that rigid in terms of uh, um, the processes. We, we need to look into that. Colleagues, I hope that I've done justice to my presentation. If there's any other question, I'm more than willing to, to respond to questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sinedi. I I am sure that there's many colleagues on the platform who have questions, um, but maybe it will be proper in the interest of time and, and, and smooth proceedings that we deal with questions at the end of, the, of, of, of my presentation. Um, with, with that said, um, thank you very much for, for that presentation. It was, it was thorough. I think what it achieved is to drive a message that attitudes towards data quality and how we, we work with data on a daily basis are actually very important. And they have 
end of the road impact on how answers can be questioned, or rather how questions can be answered um, or, or whether they cannot be answered because of the quality of the data. And, um, you know, in both your presentation and Dr. Majibi's presentation, you focus also on the human. That we, we often, you know, when we speak of systems, uh, speak of systems as, as if they are um, a magic pill, one solution to, to everything. Um, without really understanding what systems are. Uh, but indeed, one of the components of, uh, of a system in, in, in business or in government, maybe the most component of that is the human itself. So how the human thinks, what attitudes the, the human carries, what, what worldviews, what paradigms, and, and so on and so on, believe it or not, it affects the output of what you put into your technology because it determines what you put into that technology or in those technological processes. So with those words, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, at this stage then, um, colleagues on the platform, I will move on to, to my presentation. My name is Kodile Martin. I am the business, in, the project manager for the business intelligence capability at what is known as the Kauleza PMO um, here at EXEC. So in my presentation, I will cover just four areas, but I will spend more time probably on the fourth and last area. First, I will introduce the Kauleza PMO, what the Kauleza PMO is, what it is to EXEC, and what it is to the province of the Eastern Cape. And then I will also introduce the business intelligence capability within the Kauleza PMO and and where that comes from and, and what it aims to to achieve and, and realize as well and then i will then speak to business intelligence and probably busting a few myths about business intelligence and therefore i will be very philosophical and speak to theories when i speak to that part and that becomes important so that we maybe take away some unnecessary misconceptions about business intelligence and maybe we think we can just throw a pie chart there and we have achieved or attained business intelligence or that the data is always there and, and therefore a business intelligence can be attained. Um, but more importantly, the last part, I will cover what business intelligence is to government or to a government and actually put more emphasis on the government of the province of the Eastern Cape and what government, sorry, or rather what business intelligence is in, in that respect. Now, in introducing the Kauleza PMO, I'm going to be very brief on this one. The Kauleza PMO, um, for the benefit of those that do not know of, of the Kauleza PMO, and those who are already familiar will please have to excuse me on this one, on, on repeating what you already know, but the Kauleza PMO was pronounced by the Premier of the province back in 2019 during his State of the Province address. And um, some of the rather responsibilities or even say mandated responsibilities of the Kauleza PMO uh, are what it seeks to achieve in terms of project implementation success in the province, 
um, which requires um, the support of uh, project management offices and um, which also requires um, the coordination and realization of a single view of all work done by all of government in the province of the Eastern Cape. And where business intelligence comes in in that pronouncement is that in the conceptualization of the Kauleza PMO, a provincial data center or a nerve center or a data nerve center for the province is spoken about and that will sit in the Kauleza PMO. And that is where the business intelligence part comes in. And the Kauleza PMO really has three pillars, one pillar that focuses on infrastructure and one pillar that focuses on investment and one pillar that focuses on business intelligence and data. But you know, it happens that people, um, sometimes the people are referred to as laymen, they pick up a term and they generally use that term and it gains momentum. And at the end of the day, they do not have the correct understanding of what that term E means. A, a, a good example is um, a CPU. When a person sees that unit box, that's your computer, often it is referred to <laughs> as the CPU, when it is actually not the CPU. Amongst other things that that box holds is the motherboard. And amongst things that the motherboard holds is what is called the micro microprocessor. And inside the microprocessor is what is called the CPU, which is difficult to see with a human eye. But many laymen would probably kill you if you told them that the unit box of your computer that you see on your desk is not the CPU. So this is something that happens with business intelligence as well. And really to address that quickly, um, I will speak to the data life cycle at the stage of consumption as defined in the DAMA or the Data Management Association uh, body of knowledge. Um, it says, first of all, data is a plural for datum, but datum is a fact and Data is a uh, many facts and information is then data that are aggregated and collated to make sense. And when that information is looked in a perspective of time and you can establish trends there, then it says you have knowledge. And knowledge then should empower one or even an organization to make decisions or in the process of making decisions. And when that organization makes the correct decisions and effective decisions at the correct time, it can be said that it has attained intelligence. So business intelligence is really um, a use of processes, data, people, inputs and triggers and everything to help organizations um, gain intelligence about their business so that when they ask the simple question, how is business, they have the answer at their uh, fingertips. So business intelligence is the ability to make the correct, impactful, effective decisions at the correct time. However, what is business intelligence to to an organization. What we, what we know as humans, but sometimes neglect and forget, is that we live for the future. Objectives in a company's strategy um, are actually what the company or business or organization seeks to achieve in the future. And this can be broken down to deliverables that need to be achieved to get 
to those objectives. And with those deliverables, there are events and tasks. And though with those events and tasks, we often want to keep evidence and records of that. And that is where the data comes from. And when we roll that data upwards, we are actually trying to seek intelligence. But in, in government, what are the objectives? Uh, I stand to be corrected, but my belief is that in all the world, the objectives of any government are similar to those of the next. And they are about changing the world. But the world has different realms, it has different domains, it has different dimensions itself. And what we neglect is that the most important of these dimensions is the psychological. People think, people do what is called cognitive processing, and they come with decisions and they act on those decisions, and that all comes in the mind. And even setting up the business intelligence capability at the Kaulesa PMO, that seeks to serve and benefit all of government in the province. It started in the mind, and therefore attitudes and thoughts and decisions must never be neglected when we think of the world and business intelligence must consider that. And in data management, what is called data opportunities is often spoken of. And there are many data opportunities that are lost in the psychological realm or dom domain. We, we can't prove that someone has thought this or has made this decision, so we can't keep record of that unless they communicate it in some way. And then there's the actual person domain, the anthropological domain, that everything in the industrialized world is actually thought of and designed by the human. It benefits the human. The human is one of the input resources in, in, in any um, industrial, industrial process and so on. And therefore, whatever we drive is driven by us to benefit us, to realize the futures we desire. And then when the person looks outside itself, it now reaches the social and the economic um, domains or realms. That is where it's very easy to pick up data because it's relationships between people, it's agreements, it's interactions. And it's also on the other side, resources that people need to actually sustain life. And in those activities of managing and moving those resources, it's much easier to collect data there. And below that are the political and the technological realm. The political in, in simple um, academic terms is that there are ideas about how society should be or how citizens should live and interact in a society and how they should manage and distribute the, the economics or the resources. And there's a lot of decisions that are made there and the data when it's aggregated it is very useful in that space. And at EXEC and at Kaulesa and, and in all of government in the Eastern Cape, that is where we, we fit in. The province is known as a province that favors the poor, that improves the lives of the poor. That speaks to social and economic aspects. And the technology or the technological part is when the people then 
get techniques and knowledge to develop tools and other things or artifacts that allow them to actually make best use of the resources. And there, especially with the fourth industrial revolution, there is a lot of data that moves around there and it is easy to trap and catch. Now, I spoke of that objectives are actually what an organization, what a body, what a government, what a business, what even a person seeks to achieve in the future. And what we, or how we often think about future is that we want to predict it. We want to be able to accurately um, estimate what can potentially happen in the future. And we also think that what we're doing now can have an impact of what can happen in the future. And we also like to believe that what the circumstances are now are as a result or impact of historical events. So business intelligence traditionally looks at those historical events. It looks at the past. It looks at what has happened, what data has been collected um, around each of those events, and how has that resulted to today? Did it give a preferred outcome or did it give an undesired outcome? And when there was an undesired outcome, we want prescriptive analytics. We want to say, how can we remedy this? And when we want to think, what can we achieve in the future? We do what is predictive analytics. So in what we're doing at the Kaleza PMO with the business intelligence capability is we have built the platform, we've put in place the technology which we will enrich and enhance in, 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 future, in, in the near future. And with that, we have collected historical data from sector departments and from local government as well, from municipalities. And we've done some analysis on that and the trends that we get out of that, they give us what is called knowledge. And we want to share this platform now with the rest of government in the East and Cape. But in, in simple terms, what I'm saying is that in government, in the departments, there's program work. That's, there's work that's specific to programs. There's projects that are undertaken by government at different spheres and at different um, tiers. And that is all that work around projects um, and projects data is to achieve certain objectives and goals. And there's also the socioeconomic data that we collect um, that sometimes through um, subscription channels, sometimes from municipalities and sometimes from other entities such as Stats SA and as um, the IEC and so on. And there's also service delivery data, which we collect from municipalities often, and also from the sector departments. Now, all of this and the activities and tasks that happen in those spaces, they produce some data. And that data is meant to be used to, to test and ascertain whether um, municipal objectives at local municipality level are being met and are being addressed and at district level as well and with um, the departments as well. But when we go more universally, business intelligence in government, especially in the Eastern Cape, is supposed to tell us is the work that we're doing 
contributing towards our provincial development plan under the theme Vision 2030. And are we in a trajectory to actually achieve the, the goals and, 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 and target areas by 2030. Because in government in this province, ultimately, that is one of the strategies we, we, we should be guided by. The same applies to the national development plans. The little project that I'm carrying out in my program, in my department, or in my vote, or in my function, is it really contributing to that? Do you know that? Do you have means and tools to measure that? Now, the data center and the business intelligence capability in the province aims to assist everyone in government to achieve that. There's also the African view of the SDG um, or, or the SDGs. And then there's the United Nations or global view of the SDGs. And there's the United Nations Human Development Index. Is all the work that government is doing today contributing towards those? Is it putting a positive impact towards those? and the business intelligence capability, which is not just the responsibility of the Kaulesa PMO or the business intelligence capability in this office, but a responsibility for everyone who is in government in this province, and it is to benefit them at the same time. So what I've spoken to up to this point is really what business intelligence is and how it is attained or how it is achieved. And more specifically in the Eastern Cape for the government of the Eastern Cape. And from this point onwards, I'm going to move to what the Kaulesa PMO has achieved to try and get to, to, to that point where true business intelligence is realizable. What we've done, amongst other things, is to um, capture or collect data about infrastructure projects that are being implemented in the province. And we've been able to put together visualizations through what we call the word-based information system. And this is what the artifact or the visualization looks like before we have drilled down. But in the interest of time, we will not drill down to that. But it's suppose in one view, tell you a complete story. Please take a mental note of the picture of the map. And at some point, I will drill down and speak to, to, to some things that one should have picked up. We also collect service delivery data at what level, as also the previous um, slide showed that we use what is called the word based information system. And with this, what we achieve and what we, we hope to achieve is to have access to every councillor in every ward. And with that councillor, test how the citizens or residents of that ward feel about, uh, about levels of service in what is, is, is known as basic um, service delivery.
And now we've collected all the data. There's been municipalities that have been very eager to assist and supply the data. We've got the project's data for all the sector departments and so on. But how much of it is useful? What we, we've uncovered once we started working with the data that's supposed to assist the province to make decisions, to drive planning, and to even use as, as, as input insights when formulating policy, is that most of this data is not reliable, it's not complete. And it is back, or, or rather it goes back to our departments and to local government to assist us in completing this so that they can also benefit from this platform. So really with the, what we're trying to answer is the simple questions of what have we done, who has done it or who's doing it and who's benefiting and was it done on time? Are we spending on time? Where is everything done? Does it continue to, to neglect those who were neglected in the past or does it aim to, to benefit them? And why are we doing all of this or why are things happening? Um, sometimes it is because we want to realize the SDGs, we want to realize the PDP's uh, goals, we want to realize the National Development Plan goals as well. But that is all in the history, that's analyzing historical data. And in, answer, in answering that in terms of the PDP, um, there are six um, output areas of goals. And the one where most of our efforts are going is the one of human development and followed by the one of building infrastructure and infrastructure networks and at what looks like a, a, a low number in rural development and in, 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 in putting processes in the agricultural sector. And in the National Development Plan, again, the data is, is driven to see which of those um, goals or targets it, it actually puts uh, an impact towards, that it puts improvement towards. And in also the the African view of the SDGs, but what this is really is that um, the, the 17 SDGs have actually been compressed into um, seven targets and they are made to look um, towards Africa only. And maybe the most important is the one of the promise of the African youth, that Africa is seen as a, as a youthful uh, and young population, and that if we develop the youth theoretically, everything should, 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 um, should go well in terms of, of development. Uh, but there are other arguments that, that might maybe speak against that. And we also, putting an effort towards sustain, uh, sustaining Africa's economic growth and 4% of our efforts in terms of the work that we're doing as recorded in the data we have um, are actually going towards that. And you'll see that um, in, in all the, the slides, there are those that have dashes or, or gaps. And also in terms of the a human Development Framework or the United Nations Human Development Framework, the work that we're doing, we've been able to actually align it to at least one of the three pillars. 
But if you would add that up, that doesn't add up to 100%. That's because of the data gaps that we have. And with the data that we have in our data warehouse, we've been able to pull out some insights, but we're not going to uh, dwell much on them, on how much, we, how much effort we're putting towards each of the provincial development plan goals and how much we, in, in terms of the infrastructure projects, focuses on social infrastructure and how much focuses on, on economic infrastructure. And speaking to the map that I was showing, I hope one has noticed that on the east, the, the dots are close together and they, they really concentrated and there's many of them in their hundreds. But on the west, they are scattered, they're very vastly scattered, and that means there's fewer projects happening there. And it's such things that we, we, we show up, so we show um, with the business intelligence insights and, and more. But what we've also put together with the assistance um, of um, a service provider is the, the look at the SDGs and um, if this works eventually, then the, the audience will be fortunate enough to see the, the analysis that has been made on the SDGs and also how we actually progressing in actually achieving the, the SDGs. And unfortunately, we've had um, network problems. We, we can't view that, but maybe I, I will show it at the end of the, of the presentation. And with that, um, I have come to the end of my presentation as well. And really what the presentation spoke to or it spoke about is really that we should think and know what is business intelligence and what we want to achieve with or through business intelligence. And the, the real simple um, statement around that would be that it is to help us know that we are progressing well towards achieving all our object, objectives, goals, and targets as the government of the Eastern Cape. And a platform has been created and it, contain, it, it consists of a, a data center that has a data warehouse and that can hold data of any structure whether it's structured or unstructured of any format, whether it's images or database or flag files. And we can transform and manipulate that data into meaningful information, into knowledge, into insights that assist us to make the correct decisions. And all the entities I've mentioned, the sector departments, the, um, the local municipalities, our um, our metros, our district municipalities, and all the departments in government um, being invited to share data with us to, 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 to utilize this platform eventually and to benefit from it. And also at the end of the day, to, to really drive their own analytics on the same platform through um, a shared resources um, concept. With that said, I will end my presentation there and start taking questions.
Um, thank you, colleagues. We've noted three hands, and we will take the questions in the order of Sisnosis um, Sapena, Sisnonsigale Lomatiana, and Sisnabisa Maziz in that order. So we will start with Ms. Benma, if you can unmute and pose your question or comment. Uh, thank, thank you so much, sir. Um, I would just like to first appreciate all the presentations on a subject that is not very easy to navigate. OK, data, data for business intelligence. Um, and I think we all know how important the role of data analytics is in uh, better decision making. And we've seen the role of data, um, what, what, what important role it plays in the recent years of YR. And I think it's, it's a good initiative that we, we embark on this as we try to realize the vision 2030. So that's that. So my, 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 my question is around the provincial data governance program and also the um, data in, 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 in induction, I think it was, if I'm, um, I'm calling it correctly, uh, data ingestion, sorry. So Dr. Majibi mentioned that the, the, the data governance program would support projects in the province. And I'm now thinking about the consolidation of ICT services or uh, maybe shared services as one of the projects of the province. And uh, my question is, what what pro what process would need to be followed to make sure that the project also receives support from the data uh, driven uh, province, or perhaps contributes to it? Uh, what would be the process to follow uh, when there are certain data requirements in the in the project? For example, would we then have to come and present the data requirements to EXEC for support? or perhaps the requirements would have to be loaded on, on some dashboard. And also regarding the data ingestion process flow, how do we make sure that we, we don't reinvent the wheel in the project and uh, we just plug into the, the, the process flow to ensure data quality and, and the uh, retaining data value? Thank you, Che. Thank you, thank you, man. Um, we will take all the questions and then we will respond to them um, after that. We would then yeah. like to take Ms. Matiana. Yeah, thank you, um, Chair, and good afternoon to all colleagues and yourselves. My name is Nonskele Matiana from the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. I also want to, 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 to thank EXEC for this knowledge sharing platform uh, it's really quite appreciated and it's something that we've long been looking for uh, from exec because uh, from our side as public works we have this new mandate of a uh, transversal infrastructure coordination coordinating the integration within infrastructure integrated uh, planning up to integrated reporting and evaluation and at the moment, or what is required from us is that we are reporting on the performance of infrastructure uh, up to X core level. Uh, and that process is currently happening. But however, we are still struggling to get to a, a, a less tedious way of doing this, which the BI um, a system is something that has been identified as public works because we have to have that dashboard that reports on the performance of infrastructure currently. So we've been trying to get, to get hold of EXEC, uh, get hold of somebody who can even come, even in the Provincial Infrastructure Working Group. Uh, we've been trying to invite EXEC so that we ex understand what is it that is being developed so that you can also collaborate and plug it, plug, plug into the same process instead of having us as public works developing a system, a, a provincial dashboard that we need to, to report on. So firstly, I, I would like to say then in, on that uh, score, we really are looking for that opportunity to meet with you guys uh, for the purposes of collaborating and for the purposes of understanding whether what we are looking for is going to be provided uh, by this system. 
So, yeah, that is what we are looking for. Because currently, what we have, we've also done our um, environmental scanning and there's fragmentation of various systems. There's IRM from Treasury, there's systems where this information is coming from, from a DOH have their own a, a public works is developing their own and we are looking at scaling it up so that it becomes provincial. A, education has their own system, so we really need a, a something of this nature. But I don't know whether this that you are reporting, as we have said, Mr. Martin, uh, maybe I'm talking from the labor man's pers uh, perspective, the BI system is not getting there because I've, I've, I've also realized that we are reporting up to a higher level of the of the apex indicators. So I don't know to what extent whether this is going to cover what we are looking for. So we would really like this opportunity to meet with you. And then secondly, from your presentation, I've realized or I've had, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, that this data is sourced from the ward or what councillors. And then I'm just wondering to what extent is this, is there a duplication of data into this tool? Because departments also have the, the collective data that they are reporting uh, currently, even on the POA and, and our other systems. Maybe we really need that data governance uh, a, a governance that Mr. My, Dr. Majibi has spoken about so that you can agree on the hierarchy of sourcing this information. I don't know whether you can shed some light in relation to that, but the major one for me is that we would like an opportunity to meet with you guys so that uh, even presenting, I think it is in the action plan for the provincial infrastructure working group since May that we needed to invite you from the working group to see how we can ease this pattern of having a, a reporting tool, a dashboard from shelter for, that you can use up to Expo. Thank you. Thank you, Memo, for that question. Um, what we will do is we will take Ms. Mazizi and then um, after that we will respond and we note the other hands, we will take them um, after that. Can I go? Yes, please. Thank you. Good um, afternoon to everyone. And my comments are really for all three speakers, I think. Um, although um, the need for a data governance program is often evident, organizations um, like even the government um, often miss the mark when their data governance of efforts are not directly aligned to delivering um, you know, measuring measurable business business value. So therefore, um, initiatives should support the key strategic initiatives as well as value streams um, and the underlying business capabilities. So having said that, um, a comprehensive data governance should define leadership, accountability and responsibility related to data use and data handling. And in order to do this, um, a well-oiled operating model um, and relevant policies and procedures are required. So my question is around what operating model are you going to implement to ensure that the right data gets to the, to the right person um, at, the, say, at the right time using the right mechanisms as well? My second op, um, <clears throat> comment is around the data governance business processes that was presented by the second speaker or the speaker after Dr. Majibi and my apologies, I did join late. Um, so in terms of the, the business processes, I, I know that um, other departments would have a data acquisition and management process in place. Um, within there that is actually used by their BI team. 
So my question is, what are the plans for standardizing and improving the data sourcing and acquisition processes within the departments, especially when the departments source data from external um, entities? Because we know that whenever you try and source data from external organization, they will follow, they, they have very strict procedures. Um, and very strict compliance measure that the, the, the person who's requesting the data must adhere to. So um, are these aligned as well with the data backup and recovery processes? Um, I guess I want I needed to see more on the side of, of, of the business processes. And what activities are you currently working on to ensure that your data governance efforts are translated to service delivery improvement? or better services are brought closer to the citizens through data information and knowledge management. And lastly, just to answer Mr. Martin's questions in one of his slides, um, in terms of where is the work focused geospatially <clears throat> and, and respond to some of the data quality issues on project data, um, I'm involved in a project at, at Public Works where we are busy integrating the infrastructure portfolio management system with the current GIS portal where, um, or with the aim of providing accurate um, project location data up to what level and inclusive of the GPS coordinates. Um, but this again begs a, another question in terms of how do we ensure that data governance is built in when the departments build their own applications instead of picking issues up during the data profiling stage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe how we should tackle this is as follows. There are questions that are clearly um, directed at Dr. Majibi. Um, maybe Udok can tackle those and then there are those that Warabile would be most positioned to answer or respond to. Um, he can respond to that and then, yeah, I'll do the easy part. I'll just deal with the, with the leftovers. Um, so, Doc, I think the two questions that you can ask, uh, sorry, that you'd need to respond to, the first one is the one from the first um, from the first um, question, and it was around um, data governance. I hope you picked that up, Doc. And then another one again is around data governance. How we will make sure that it is aligned. To, to, to business benefits and also how do we make sure that um, data governance is actually taken care of at operational level, at the lowest level. Um, hoping that I presented those questions accurately, Doc. Should we come back to you, Doc? Yeah, I think, I think there's a lost connection there. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I didn't pick up the last part. Okay. So the I don't know if you had the, the, the two questions. Yeah, um, yeah, I did all the yeah. questions. Yeah. The second one was around data governance being allied. To, to business benefits and also data governance being implement, implemented rather at the lowest level in, in operations and in operational activities. How are we going okay. to? Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for the questions. Let me start with Ungabisa, the last one. Uh, what we have done, Ungabisa, is that uh, the province. Uh, through the office of the premier are currently 
uh, finalizing a digital transformation strategy. And one of the key issues there, which is the prerequisite of the implementation of the, of the digital transformation strategy, is data governance. So we've, 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 we've put a, a project just around data governance within that strategy. So what I mean about that is that what we will be doing now, we'll be consulting each and every department one by one for the strategy and then key projects that are common to each and every department is the data governance program, which we are implementing through the digital council. So that one, the flow to the cascade to departments cascading to individuals will happen at the strategic level of the province, which is digital transformation. We should envisage that by the 1st of April next year, that strategy will be approved and uh, being implemented as a shared strategy rather than each department doing their own thing. So we're going to have a shared strategy, one strategy for the entire province on digital transformation where data governance is one of the projects and it's very key project on, on, on that. I just hope my answer to that one. Secondly, uh, on data governance program, which is driven through the digital council on a month to month basis, we are presenting there all the issues that are happening within the province and within EXEC. And moreover, what we're doing there is that we want to sit down with departments as EXEC so that we show them how we're going to do the standards. The standards and guidelines will be informed by our consultation with all the departments around data governance program. So we won't uh, start the program without consulting departments because we know that departments currently do have some data, some somehow, but in a silo uh, engagement. So what you want to do now, when we meet all the departments as exec and the team from the council, that is the PI touch team, which is the provincial touch, provincial digital, uh, provincial data governance steering committee. As that team, when we meet all the departments, we focus on all the areas, your standards, your guidelines, so that we've got one common ground that when we say, here are our standards for the province, we're talking one language. Uh, I think I've covered. Anyway, I think I've covered those two. Yeah? If I, if I'm missing something, just remind me. Um, thank you, Doc. I think you've covered them adequately. Mm. Um, so I will allow Warabile to also respond to the questions. Okay. Yeah, I've got like three questions. One from Mosisan, if I'm not mistaken, how do we plug in? And then the other question is um, the hierarchy of information. And the last one, standardization, sourcing and standardization. So colleagues, when I started, I said we, we had a meeting. And in that meeting, we decided that we need to do environmental scanning of what systems do we actually have in the province? But uh, that effort was actually to see if whether is there avenues of us integrating directly with the systems into our own shows and all that. So, so that's that's the reason why we wanted to do that because uh, we believe that most of uh, our external stakeholders there are systems that are existing. Let's leave the question of the quality of data that is in that system. But that's what we wanted to do. And uh, it addresses even the question of cysnosis of data ingestion. How do they then plug in? If we know what kind of systems do you have, then we can suggest or collectively come up with approaches to how do we then integrate directly with your systems in terms of data sourcing. So, so I've, I've presented on methods that we can actually use. We can build APIs to make sure that we push.
I don't know if it's just me, but Urabile, we've lost you. Yes, I've also lost him as well. I was getting, getting him. It seems as if there's a problem with the network in the office. They are busy trying to sort it out. Hello, Doc. Can you guys hear me? Our network just dropped. Yeah, we can, we can hear you now. Okay, I'll proceed from my laptop. I hope that you will be audible. Yeah, so I've addressed the issue of, of, of the environmental scanning. That, that was the very first exercise that we wanted to undertake so that we can give an advice as to what are then the possible methods, you know, of us sharing data with the departments and all that. And uh, we have since sent emails to all different uh, departments uh, in Rhine really to have meetings with them. So I'm excited today that Public Works says they really wanted to meet with us. We really want to meet with Public Works. And we, I think we had few meetings already with one lady from Public Works, but uh, yeah. So, so we wanted to exchange data, wanted to directly integrate so that to minimize also even the errors in our data, because if we understand that as you send data through other uh, uh, through flat files and uh, and all that, it might uh, compromise the quality of data. So that's what we, we, we really want to do. And also on the, the question of uh, data sourcing and standardization, speaking to business processes and all that. It is when departments respond to our request of having meetings. And it is when the departments agree on sharing the data. It is when we understand the systems that uh, uh, our uh, uh, partners are using or stakeholders are using that we can move towards standardization. Standardization, it comes after we have developed processes and if we can iteratively execute those processes and then we 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 getting a consistent there's some level of consistency in what comes out of that then we can look at uh, really standardizing and ultimately automating uh, certain uh, processes so uh, um it is when the departments they meeting with us because this thing it's 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 really not uh, an effort that needs to be driven by exec only it is for us by us. So let's get to those meetings and then let's start to discuss this thing. Let's move towards standardizing uh, most of these things. We are, I think one of the most paramount things that we wanted to do as the, as the, as the we really, really, okay. So yes, we, we really want to, to work because we are here for, for all the departments, not but for ourselves. And the value of the work that we do, we hope that it will have positive effects on, on the citizenry of the province. So let's, let's, let's get in sessions, in workshops. Let's workshop these things. We have developed already now, we've got an data warehouse that is existing. We got few processes in place, we need uh, um, our colleagues to support us in terms of sharing the data. Let's sit with them and see 
uh, uh, where they're struggling and how can we actually assist them in whatever that they are doing. So I hope that I've done the data sourcing and standardization and processes, business processes, a, 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 a justice there. Otherwise, uh, perhaps, um, I think I'm done from my end. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mr. Svegisho, and thank you, Doc, for responding to some of those questions. Um, what I would like to, to do maybe first is that um, I should apologize for the drop in connectivity, then the whole building just lost internet connectivity going outside of the building. And that has since been, been rectified. But maybe there are other questions that I want to respond to that I need to respond to before we take the two hands that are up now. The first question speaks to the, the measure of performance of infrastructure, how the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure can, can benefit that, and that there are fragmented systems that try to achieve the same thing in the sense that different departments have their different tools. And this also speaks to a, a question that Uwanabile responded to. And it was a question on, on data acquisition. So maybe what needs to be clear is that, firstly, the means of integration of moving data from any source to our data center are in place. The technology and tools are in place. And an approach that has been followed has been that there has been contact made with the departments and we will continue making that um, uh, that that contact um, knocking at those doors and assisting with um, integration and connectivity and also putting everyone on the platform the fragmented systems, these are systems that we would like to, to have discussions about. Are they activity or operational systems or are they attempts to achieve business intelligence? And if they are activity or operational systems, then they're serving a different purpose. They, they're rather more operational. But if they are not, then we can have a discussion that the owners of those systems think whether they want to use them in conjunction with the province-wide platform or they want to, to scrap them eventually. So there can be an approach to that, but the, the framework currently considers that there will be means of integration that should cater for, for everyone. And there was another question on duplication of effort and how do we avoid that? And really the answer to that is in the data governance initiative that is currently being formulated for the province, for the entire province. I remember both Uwarabile and Dr. Matibi when they spoke on data quality and also on processes. What they spoke on was the duplication of data and it was a duplication of process. So there needs to be that um, synergic discussion between those that are involved. And that will happen through the uh, PGTO Council and that will happen through the BI task team. And 
with those covered. And in terms of what operating model for data security, making sure that the correct and relevant data is exposed only to the correct and relevant person. That in our infrastructure consideration is considered. It is well con it is one of the first check boxes. And it's really technical to for, for this platform to mention how that is done. But it, it is very important uh, that together with auditing of processes. We with that I hope I have covered all the questions and adequately and appropriately. And I see there are two hands on the platform. And we we already over our time. So I will request that this be the the, the last round of hands. When with that said, with our power outage, we may have lost the sequence, but at this moment we have Jimmy Jacob as the first hand, and then we have Pamli Lichizan as the second hand. Can we take Mr. Jacob, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Jimmy Jacob. I work for the Department of Provincial Treasury. I have two questions. Uh, I would like to know how is the data stored in the data warehouse? Is it stored in a tabular format, like a two-dimensional data or as a three-dimensional data? And my next question is with regards to the data injection. Uh, if the data quality is not satisfactory, uh, is there an automatic notification to the stakeholder? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Then the okay, last uh, okay. afternoon uh, presenters and uh, participants. Uh, my name is Pam Lichis and I'm coming from Department of Public Works. Uh, I've just I've got just two questions. The question around the question of uh, that was raised by Mr. Majib, the question of uh, data management policy. Uh, I know that uh, there has been a, 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 an initiative uh, where uh, even uh, who was driven by the very same exec in terms of popia rollout across the departments. And uh, there were some policies uh, that were identified uh, relating to data management. Uh, wouldn't those policies help to, uh, as a basis of coming up with a, a broader uh, data management policy for the province? Another question would be around CETA. Uh, one of the monetary services for CETA is elimination of duplication and ensuring interoperability. I don't see them. Uh, I know they are part of the PGD Council, but uh, I don't know if there's any influence or role that they are playing going forward, other than them being uh, the part of the PGD Council. And the last one would be uh, to Urabile. Uh, sometimes we've got a problem uh, when we seek information from the department. Uh, we have just sent a spreadsheet and uh, you find that if if that information that is required, uh, there's no clarity uh, background uh, information as to why that information is, is required. You find that people take time to respond. That is a, a challenge. I think maybe uh, also a sol I'm also proposing a solution to that effect. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So I, I think there are four questions in total. I'll take the first two and then the one on data governance policy with Dr. Majibi will take and then the one that was um, directed to Warabile, he will take it. Now the first question was whether how is the data stored rather? Is it in a 3D or two-dimensional. To answer that question, I will say that data is 
in the data warehouse, it's it's sitting at different levels. And Waravile did touch on that. And there's the staging or dumping area, there's the um, scrubbing, there's the profiling area, there's the um, scrubbing area, and yeah. there's the transformation or dev area. And what the transformation or dev area does is that it transforms the data to a star schema dimensional model following the Ralph Kimball methodology. I hope that that answers you. And now our ETL processes, together with our transformation processes, are really sequenced and packaged in SSIS or in an ETL a tool that's supplied by Microsoft. And we do prep for errors. We also have in place for triggers for when certain conditions that we test for are met. And those, quite, those conditions are usually error. They, they are problems in the data. And there are two things that happen with that. There's a, a notification that's sent to the database administrator and the data warehouse engineer. And it can say this problem was found and it was fixed. Another problem is that this problem was found and that data was put in this bucket. Please send it back to the originator, to the data owner, and they look at that. So I hope that has answered those two questions. And Doc, and I hope you, you, you then are in a position to answer the question from Mr. Jezana around the data governance policy and maybe borrowing from policies that are already in place or actually augmenting what is in place with those. There was a question slash comment that spoke around that. I wonder if you're able to take that look. Thank you, thank you, Corelli, and thank you, Mr. Jezana, for, for the question. Uh, I think you are spot on because if you check uh, my presentation for today where I was giving you the framework of data governance, you'll see that there's a part saying data privacy and security, including Poppy. So it's within that cycle of data governance. Uh, what we have done uh, within this uh, with Poppy is that in the province, we said the minimum of five policies are common to every department. That is one, data classification policy, data privacy and information security policy, data protection and information sharing policy, data retention policy, data security breach management policy. Those five, they form part of the entire data governance policy in general. So you are spot on on there. They'll be part of when you, when you draft and design a data governance policy for the province. Those will be integrated. We're going to collect or borrow some few areas or few things from those uh, areas of that five. That is basic. So you are spot on. It's integrated and they are interlinked. Uh, I think that's how that one. On the CETA issue, being responsible for interoperability. I agree with you even there, they are responsible to avoid the duplication. But as I said earlier that our consultation process will go via the council and they are the members of the council. So we will consult them so that we are not, we are not leaving them behind and then having some various issues after uh, our implementation. So they will be part of the consultation process. Thank you, Corelia. Thank you, Doc. And the last question, I think it was a rather a bit of advice mm -hmm. that when seeking information from departments, it helps to attach um, a note that explains why the data is needed and what it will be used for and how it will be used. 
with 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 that um, colleagues and those on the platform i think we have come to to the end of this webinar and we appreciate and thank everyone's um, attendance but at the beginning of this webinar the head of the Kaunas PMO, Mr. Mapele Lumshava, or otherwise often referred to as BAPS, was not on the platform. And he is now on the, on, on the platform. And I would like to invite him to, to make the closing and, and last comments or any general comments. Mr. Mshava, over to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues, and uh, um, thank you for taking the time to join the webinar. Uh, I think Mr. Martin has basically said, uh, even before I started saying anything, said we are out of the time that we plan uh, for this particular uh, webinar. And, and I think uh, Mr. Martin and Dr. Majibi, we, we have taken note of uh, the inputs that were made by, by department. And I think various departments and various colleagues are, are basically uh, in not so many words saying, let's take this forward and let's make sure that we are inclusive as, as much as possible. And I, I do see um, quite significant work that we can do with the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. Uh, colleagues would remember that we are joined at the heat with the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure from the time uh, Premier Mabuyane um, established the Kareza PMO um, out of that first uh, um, state of the province address, which was the first for the term of government, which is the, the sixth administration. So we are really uh, going to um, take that challenge and we are going to be meeting with the department. And I hope that uh, Umesif Tizana will also be part of the sessions in order for us to trash how do we uh, bring closer the collaborations. Um, I've also seen that part of the people that actually attended the webinar is the provincial CIO, uh, or Mr. Matikeza. And, I, and I'm hoping, uh, Nation, that the, the the BI task team keeps the uh, the the Pijito on track on a monthly basis in terms of this work that it's doing. Because as much as we have taken the time to articulate what we're trying to achieve, uh, the nuts and bolts uh, needs to be guided by the details and. Uh, and, and and I'm hoping that we can be able to challenge this work through the PGT on a on a, on a, on to the council on a on a monthly basis. And 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 colleagues, I, I do want to say there is no small, no big input. And the inputs that you have given us, uh, the webinar was recorded. We're going to go back, and we are going to be tracking how do we able to take all of the inputs that you've given us. As, as the PMO and as exit broadly in terms of taking this work forward. And uh, with those uh, few words, uh, and I'm noting that we're really out of time, uh, I don't want to keep you longer because we are going to need you again in the next quarter uh, when we give you an update in terms of where we are. These webinars, they assist us to be able to, to keep each other on track and on par in terms of the information dissemination and as well as in tracking uh, and, and, and ensuring that we, we provide pioneering thinking into the space in the public service. Uh, the private sector has, has, has moved significantly because they don't have to deal with most of the governance issues that we have to deal with at a private sector level. We have also been in discussions with uh, Gauteng uh, my counterpart at, at Kauteng, uh, we've been talking about how we can be able to to bring uh, the co collaborations between the two provinces, which is the Eastern Cape and, and Gauteng, on the issue of data governance as well as the business intelligence work that we do in the public service. So 
there's going to be more that we are going to be sharing with you in the future. Uh, as, as I said, and I think Dr. McDivitt did say earlier in the space that we are basically pioneering, pioneering a new space in terms of better governance. And we are going to do those so in the interest of uh, national government in the broader public sector, and we'll keep you abreast going forward. So without much uh, uh, else, uh, thank you very much for taking your time to be with us today. And uh, until we invite you and until you call us or drop us an email, um, thank you very much and uh, have a productive day further. Thank you, colleagues.